Hi, this is Dr. Tim Green, and I'm here with Dr. George Valetzianos, an associate professor and a Canadian research chair in innovation, learning, and technology at the School of Education and Technology in beautiful uh, Victoria, British Columbia, and that's at the Royal Roads University. Uh, welcome, George. Thank you for letting me interview you. Oh, thanks for having me, Tim. This is a pleasure. So, I, if you haven't read uh, George's work, and you're in distance ed and open online learning, you really need to. He, uh, I became familiar with his work several years ago when he, in his work on emerging technology and distance education, and now recently, which is going to be the, the, the focus of this interview, is on social media network scholars, which is a topic that I'm very interested in. So, uh, I mean, I, I could go on and list all your work, but uh, we'll put some of that on, on my blog, on my website. But the, the one thing that I want to focus on now is one of your new books that's coming out, and I believe it's, for, it's with Rutledge. Is that where it is? Social yeah. Media and Network Scholars? Yeah, that's correct. So uh, Social Media and Academia and Network Scholars is um, a due to the publisher actually pretty soon in the next couple of months. And then I believe it will be out um, uh, four or six months after that, so uh, relatively quickly. Excellent. Yeah, we're looking forward to uh, having that out in press and being able to see it. So, and I know I think you've you've been kind enough. I don't know how this worked out, but you're kind enough to put some of that on your website as a preview, and that's how I've I've been able to look at that. Is it still on your website? Yeah. So I've uh, I've talked to the publisher, and they've been kind enough to um, allow me to post some of that work. And as we're getting closer and closer, I'll be posting more of that. Um, we actually negotiated half of the chapters to just be on there freely available, uh, which is you know something that I value and um, and and I hope uh, it helps you know people um, make sense of the book, even if they don't you know afford to purchase it, they can get the main ideas behind the book uh, from from that. I know I appreciated it. That's I I've, I've been I've been reading reading some of it that's been up there. So thank you. So uh, let's jump into the questions. And really, again, it's about social media and uh, in, in academia. And so that's, kind of, that's our topic. So, so you've written quite a bit about open scholarship and the use of social media by academics, especially in higher ed. And I know you've even written about it uh, for K-12 teachers. How did you get involved in this topic? And, uh, and what, what are your, how did you get interested in this? Sure. So um, around... Uh, 2008, I believe, um, when I was writing my first book, uh, there was a lot of conversation about social media and education in general, and a lot of that conversation was around, um, you know, how teachers use social media, how uh, those technologies could contribute, um, and, um, and I came across uh, a presentation at a conference about the use of web. 2.0 tools by by academics. I was in England at the time, and um, and you know that piqued my curiosity. So I started reading more and more, and I realized that there's uh, there wasn't much empirical uh, work in terms of how academics and especially um, education researchers are using uh, social media. So that was kind of the impetus to uh, start exploring this area. And um, and over time, we've done uh, we've done um, a lot of work trying to understand both what people do on social media um, and why they do the things that they do, uh, and how kind of the environment that they live in and the institution's policies or um, you know their their work environment essentially influences uh, what it is that they do. Um, and I mean, it really is an interesting topic for me because it's kind of an amalgamation of um, of disciplines of you know schools of thought and so on. Um, I come from an instructional design background, um, and um, you know there we look at how we we can improve various um, approaches or solve instructional problems and so on. So you know, I come at this from that kind of similar lens. But also with a lens of understanding, um, kind of what really, what, what happens when um, people use social media, right? So not just in terms of 
what people should do or what is the state of the art in terms of you know social media use for scholarship for teaching for research but uh, when you give you know when an academic starts a blog what is it that they do right so so yeah that's um i guess that's a, the long answer to how <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> That's good. How, how it developed. <laughs> so you, you talked about it being back in 2008. Uh, what, what was, do you, do you recall, uh, what was your first uh, work that you did based upon this topic after you got interested in it? What, what did you study? What did you look at? Um, I know, I'm putting you on the spot. Sorry. Oh, no, it's, um, it's absolutely fine. Um, the first, uh, I think the first piece of, I can't remember what the first <laughs> piece of work was, but the first major piece of work uh -huh. was um, was uh, trying to analyze a data set of tweets to understand what is it that people do on Twitter. Um, so we collected um, um, a group, I think, I, if I remember well, it was about 50 academics. Uh, and we basically collected their latest 200 tweets and analyzed them to um, using a standard, you know, um, coding method to see what is it that they do. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. That's... And it was really interesting at the time. Um, I mean, nowadays, there's a lot of conversation about, you know, access to um, data that could be considered public, the ethics around um you know, social media uh, data and trace data and so on. Uh, at that time, there wasn't much talk about it. Um, and, you know, we had to really grapple with those ideas of what do we, what can we use, what should we use, um, how do we protect participants' identities and so on. Uh, so, yeah, that was an interesting part of it that uh, we haven't uh, reported much, um, I guess, in our work. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you. And I know I put you on the spot there. I can't remember what I did last, six months ago. So uh, that's impressive. That's back years ago. So I kind of I want to move to your new book, Social Media in, uh, in Academia Network Scholars. What? So what was the impetus for or the start for this book? Why? Why this book? Um, so the the idea was to bring together a lot of the research that we've been doing um, in kind of one volume and to try and make sense of the field um, without having kind of disparate studies uh, all over the place, right? And try and make kind of sense of all of the things that we've been studying and learning. Uh, so that was kind of the main idea. And, um, and along with that, uh, was also some kind of this belief that we needed to, or I needed to describe some of these ideas in a longer form than um, than I could have, um, as opposed to a journal paper that's you know thirty pages long. So that kind of what brought it together. Um, and there's there's a lot of data that we haven't uh, reported in other studies. Um, that we think are interesting and give a, a different lens to looking at this. So uh, that's kind of what brought the book together. So I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to spoil the whole premise of the book or by by asking this question. But what? So what do you what do you hope your readers get from this book? What What are some of the the main points that you hope people walk away with? Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not spoiling anything. <laughs> The summaries of the chapters are on my blog already, so it's uh, I mean it's all gonna be there. Um, the main there's a number of uh, you know main lessons, if you will, but um, the main idea I think is um, the characterization of social networks as uh, networks that allow different things to happen or where different things happen. So each chapter is essentially framed around an idea. And uh, in, each, in each chapter, I describe that idea. So, for example, one of the chapters is um, describes networks as networks of tension. So, in that chapter, I'm looking at all the tensions that arise when academics participate on social media. Um, things like um, academics wanting. Uh, 
uh, wanting to participate, but feeling um, kind of uneasy about how their employer might perceive their participation or how uh, the time that they spend on social media could be better spent elsewhere, given the priorities of their institutions and so on. Um, or even, you know, academics who have um, accidentally found themselves in, um, in in the spotlight by things that they said, you know, when they were thinking that they were just talking with friends, but because of the scale and kind of the publicity or the public nature of uh, some of these things, you know, they they were written up in uh, you know major newspaper, right? When they didn't necessarily want to do that. Um, so 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 each chapter kind of deals with an issue like that. So networks of tension. Uh, networks of disclosure is another one which I think is fascinating uh, and that chapter is about um, academics describing uh, or using social media to um, to disclose various things um, either professional or personal so uh, we see a number of people sharing you know life struggles with uh, with their colleagues um, so I think that's that's one of the topic that hasn't been explored much in the literature, and I'm fascinated by it. So so that's in the book as well. So yeah, that's kind of the main premise, kind of different ways to look at networks, um, and to kind of bring home the idea that these tools and the ways that they're used are not just used by academics for scholarly purposes, but they're used for personal purposes as well. And it's really difficult sometimes to differentiate kind of the personal and the professional. Um, so that's um, that's a main theme running throughout the book. Excellent. Yeah, that's that's very important, very important topics for those of us who are who are on social media. So you, you, a lot of your work you talked about, and I think in this book too, it deals with the the idea, and you mentioned it, open scholarship, and considering that on your your blog, you provide access to your chapters. What do you see as some of the greatest challenges for those who are in academia uh, with the idea of open scholarship? I mean, do you see any issues with it? Any challenges, benefits? What, however, you want to tackle this question. Love to hear your what you what you think about that. Yeah, um, I mean, I guess at present, some of the things that I'm thinking about are. Um, um, on the one hand, you kind of have a, a tendency for people to not fully understand what, what open necessarily means. Um, and, uh, and I think in some ways it's, it is kind of an esoteric topic just because it deals with, you know, licensing and all that stuff. Sure. And, and a lot of colleagues and myself included in the past would just, you know, sign the, um, the agreement that was sent by the journal for us to publish our work and, you know, just, um, and just do that without, you know, second thoughts, right? Um, so I think one of the challenges is truly understanding what open means. Uh, there's, there's a general perception out there that uh, free is the same as open. And uh, I think the, um, you know, the open community needs to do a better job in helping people understand uh, kind of the nuances of open and along with that um, its potential because I think an early understanding what open mean what open means allows people to grasp um, the, the benefits of it. I think a second uh, challenge that I'm uh, increasingly interested in is how um, is how the values of the people that are promoting openness at this stage might shape uh, kind of the community, because it um, as a you know as a relatively new um, topic, uh, it it's um, it's promoted by by a group of people who who are champions, right? So um, and uh, even though the idea of openness has behind it some of these values about democratization and, and access to knowledge and reduction of costs and so on. Um, I wonder sometimes how the values of the proponents come to shape mm -hmm. uh, the concept and the construct and, um, and I'd like to uh, include some more voices in that so that it becomes more um, uh, 
um, more, I guess, amenable to the different types of communities that might come to use it. So, um, yeah, I mean, we know that um, concepts like openness um, come to get shaped by the cultures that they're in, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I would hope that uh, more people become involved and, and, and help shape that into something that's um, increasingly acceptable by more and more people. Excellent. Um, yeah, and the final, I guess I can mention one more. Sure. But the final, yeah, the final challenge is, um, it, it is tied to that second challenge, I suppose, but a lot of this work has been, um, has been advocacy based. And, uh, and as we look at open scholarship in particular, um, openness um, has been taken up because it's promoted as having, you know, these potential outcomes and values. And there's not much empirical research uh, supporting some of these ideas. So um, I'm hoping that we are going to be seeing more and more of that. And we have been seeing more and more of that, especially in the open textbook um, context. There's been more and more empirical evidence showing um, positive um, learning outcomes and, uh, and reduction in costs. So, uh, so I'm hoping more of that is will be coming. Great, thank you. That's that, those are three interesting challenges for sure. So I, I I like to end all my interviews with kind of an advice question, and you can take it however whichever way you want. So you, obviously your work is. Uh, uh, has a lot to do with scholars being networked, uh, you know, and so socially networked with, with social media and social tools. What advice do you have for those who uh, are just starting out and want to become whatever we mean by a network scholar? Where should we begin? What, what, what activities would you suggest they engage in? And what, what, I guess in general, what's your advice? Yeah. Um, I guess my general advice is, um, not necessarily for people to pick up a particular tool, um, but for um, people to understand what uh, what network networks are, uh, what they can afford, uh, what some of their challenges are. So it's, uh, I guess, my advice is is more in terms of, you know, um, reading and understanding networks and learning how to how to do that and how to navigate networks and how to to make sense of the networks and their potential for scholarly work. Um, and I think with that, um, over time, people may pick up different tools that might help them, you know, enact some of those ideas. The, Twitter is generally um, very popular, right? But people use, uh, use a variety of tools to do their work, uh, you know, from YouTube communities to, um, to individuals just, you know, sharing their, um, their um, slideshows on SlideShare and so on. But I think those, those tools are secondary and they change, um, and they change over time. So, um, so yeah, um, so that's, that's, that would be my first piece of advice, I suppose. So understanding networks and how, how they're formed and what they can do, and then the tools, tools will come. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. So again, uh, I, I, George, I appreciate uh, you taking your time to talk about your work and uh, your new book, Social Media and Academia and Network Scholars, that which you mentioned will come out soon. I, I'll, I will put all this information on my website so you'll be able to link to uh, Dr. Valenciano's work. And again, thank you for your time. It's, it, it's been awesome. It's awesome meeting you and, and hearing about your work. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me. This was uh, this was fun, and uh, you know, if any, if your readers have any sort of questions, uh, they should uh, feel free to get in touch and ask and ask them. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks.